The 18th, you have a special presentation for us today and some of the other aldermen if you want to approach the diocese. You know, all the women from the 19th, all the women from the 1st, all the women from the 5th, the 22nd. Mr. President, members of the board, 2008 marks the 82nd anniversary of the celebration of Black History Month, founded by Dr. Carter G. Woodson back in 1926. Uh, Dr. Woodson himself was born in 1875 and was a part of the first generation of African Americans born here at that time period free from chattel slavery. Both his mother and father were held as slaves in the eastern part of the United States. But one thing Carter G. Woodson, Dr. Woodson said his father constantly pushed to him was one was to remember and understand history and he taught him the very much importance of education. Dr. Woodson was not able as a young man to complete high school so somewhere around age 21 he was finally able to enter school and completed all of his studies basically from about the fifth grade level all the way through high school in two years. He was a phenomenal young man. From there, he began to teach. In those days, a high school education was almost tantamount to a bachelor's degree at a, at a university today. So with that high school diploma, he began to teach. He found himself later as the school superintendent of schools in the Philippines and then traveled in his studies throughout Europe and Asia. He ultimately got his master's degree from the University of Chicago, I believe in 1900 or 1903, and then finally got his PhD in history from Harvard University in 1912. That is a far distance from where he began, the first son of two individuals as held as slaves in the United States. Now that generation I had the opportunity to know personally. My grandmother and my grandfather was born as a part of that generation. My father's mother was born 1878 and my mother's father 1882. They were a phenomenal generation. They had in mind a purpose and that purpose was to improve the condition of the plight of the, as they said, the Negroes in the United States. Carter G. Woodson noted in his studies, his thesis at, at Harvard University was the education of the Negro prior to 1861. Through his studies, he found several very important facts. One, that there was a seasoning process used for Africans brought from the continent to the United States. And that seasoning process was an attempt to completely stamp out the African identity in them and to supplant a new concept of this thing called the Negro. Carter G. Woodson, Dr. Woodson mentioned several things, that people are named by a land mass. They're named after a ancient ancestor of significance. They may be named after a language or they may be named after a historical monument or a special landmark or continent. When you look on the map, you do not find, if you look on the globe, you do not find Negro land. And his point was, was that was a idea created to miseducate the African and create this individual called the Negro. Thus in 1933, Dr. Carter G. Woodson wrote a book, his most landmark book called The Miseducation of the Negro. In that he basically says, if you teach a man to go in the back door long enough whether there is a back door or not, when they can go in the front door, they will make a back door to go into. His point was, 
a point that his father consistently taught him was the significance of education and the impact that it has on a person's self-concept, self-worth, and their potential as a human. In 1915, he and others created an organization called the Association for the Study of Negro Life in History. That organization came up with the idea with Dr. Carter G. Woodson to have a Negro History Week. They came up with that idea in 1925. In 1926, they began, they launched the first Negro History Week that they founded and proclaimed it to be the second week of February because of two historic figures. Of course, Frederick Douglass, who was a famous abolitionist, African-American abolitionist, who was born the second week of February, and Lincoln, who many African-Americans uh, felt had done some significant work in the ending of slavery, was also born the second week of February. So the association proclaimed the second week of February Negro History Week. And they had a grand celebration in Washington, DC. They said it went so well that they established it as a ongoing celebration. And here we are, 82 years later, still celebrating. At this point, we call it Black History Month. During the consciousness movement of the 70s, the association changed it from the name of Negro History Week to Black History Week, and then later on to Black History Month. Carter G. Woodson says about the founding of it, and I wish my memory was good enough to quote it exactly because I would seem more intelligent than maybe I am, but I will read exactly what he says about the reason for establishing it. His point was, was not to castigate anyone else or to raise, as he said, the Negro above anyone else, but to simply to put the truth out there because not having it, the information, not having the truth there hurts all human beings. And it causes us not to fully understand the potentials of humans that we could have. For example, here in this area, we have Lewis and Clark, they say, you know, who, who went on westward expansion, but so often they leave out the story of York, who was the African who was with them and interacted with the native people of this land and allowed them to go to the places that they went. We even have a statue now, a monument on the riverfront that lacks an image of York. To leave that kind of information out harms all humans and denies us the right to fully have an understanding of the human potential. So Dr. Carter G. Woodson says about the founding of, at that time, Negro History Week, he says that the celebration tends not to promote propaganda, but to counteract it by popularizing the truth. It is not interested so much in Negro history as it is history influenced by the Negro. For what the world needs not is a history of selected races or nations, but the history of the world void of national bias, race hate, and religious prejudice. There has been therefore no tendency in Negro History Week to eulogize the Negro nor to abuse his enemies. The aim has been to emphasize important facts in the belief that facts properly set forth will speak for themselves. So in honor of what Dr. Carter G. Woodson has done and the history of people of the world and people in this country and African Americans, the African American Caucus uh, celebrates and invites you to join in this celebration of Black History Month as we recognize significant contributors to the St. Louis community of African-American descent.